and welcome to the Widow's Journals here on C is for Crone. My name is Ray and I am the Crone in C is for Crone. Um, and as always, too many electronics, the phone goes beep. Um, anyways, um, it's June 25th. It's a hard day for me. Um, I wouldn't normally be making this video, but uh, some things were said in a way that I don't think we were necessarily intended to come off as the way we were, but I got a message. And of course, when anybody messengers me anything, and I'm not in the right frame of mind to take a step back, um, which it has definitely been the last nine months, nine and some months, we're going on almost ten months now, since Kirk passed, um, I have a tendency to react from an emotional standpoint, but I had a valid point in, in it. Um, some things need to happen as they happen, and if they don't happen, then I got to figure out how to make it happen differently. Um, there is just a lot going on in my life. I, I'm not working, I don't have a job, but my life is still very, very busy. And what the busy is, is emotionally busy. I spend a lot of time asking myself, am I okay enough to go do this, do that, whatever. And I have health issues, as most of you know. So, via, um, I ended up on Facebook. And I have been skimming through there because there's just some things I can't deal with right at the moment. They're important issues and they need to be dealt with, but not by me, <laughs> not right now. Um, and so this video has kind of been months in the making uh, because sometimes I get the feeling that people don't think I'm taking care of myself. Um, there are a lot of people who do who know what's going on because it's not like I don't talk about stuff. I just don't talk about stuff. Um, there are reasons for that. Um, it hurts. And I'm alone and talking long distance means when I fall apart, there's no one here to hold my, even hold my hand when I fall apart. Um, it's, especially with COVID. COVID has um, made it so that uh, friendly intimacy um, is in short, short supply or doesn't exist. One of the hardest things in the world is dealing with grief and doing it by yourself. Um, and, er and lots of people would say, um, I was going to say everybody would say, but not everybody would say that. But lots of people would say that's what mental health for is for. But here, where I live, mental health absolutely glows big, fat, goat chunkies. It sucks. And for a person who's like me that lives in the place I do with my empathy, my HSP, and my psychic gifts that a lot of people say hey, don't exist, um, come walk and come be me and know things are going to happen before they happen and then have them happen and then tell me they don't exist. Um, I've spent a lifetime dealing with things. And uh, at 50 now I'm getting to the point where I have broken down to a point where I am just not tolerant of that kind of thinking anymore. You know. Um, I'm one of the most tolerant people on the planet, even if last February, my behavior, or through this whole grief thing, my behavior hasn't shown that. Um, I'm actually one of the most tolerant people you will ever find. Um, there's usually a reason why people do what they do, uh, when they do it. And so, I go to that reason. Um, if I can't find a reason, I usually make something up so that my brain doesn't explode from trying to figure out why people do the stuff that they do. People are crazy. That's just the straight and narrow. Um, how they get to crazy is their story. So today is about my story, uh, my grief journey. 
one that involves the little something that's sh that just did that on my leg and was sh is shaking the camera. <laughs> okay, just a second. Uh, I'll pause this. Okay, so I did that little thing. I forgot to turn the camera back on. So, <laughs> let go of my toes, no claws. There. Play with your toy. There we are. Okay, so I gotta start over from the beginning. Um, hopefully I can get the train of, train of thought back because I was doing pretty good. Um, so anyways, I started with my poem <laughs> that I had written. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the songs that led me here this last week has been, um, I Don't Want to Talk About It by Rod Stewart, and then, um, uh, Demons by, Today Was Demons by, uh, Two Chells Remake, um, it's originally done by Imagine Dragons. I will post links to those songs in the description box below. Uh, yes, thanks. It's unfortunate because there was some stuff that happened with Monkey. Uh, anyone who's been following the channel knows who Monkey is already. Um, I just didn't notice that the time wasn't moving. Um, welcome to my great story. <laughs> Where everything is surreal. And things happen, and don't happen, and half happen. And, uh, so anyways, um, here's the poem. <laughs> uh, the words I need will not come. They dance inside my head like butterflies. I want to speak the truth. But which truth? The one that's most true no one will believe? Feeling lost, nothingness all around completely trapped in a place I asked never to be. I know life isn't fair, but somehow this is so cruel. The words I need will not come. They dance inside my head like butterflies. And so that um, bit of poetry allowed me to open up and express in the third person because sometimes doing in third person it's much easier to write what's actually going on inside you in your head in your body because you're not you're, you're seeing it from outside not from inside and often that outside perspective is what helps us see clearer Sometimes you got to go way inside to see what's going on, but so, so often that outside perspective does help you write down what's going down, going on, so that um, you can really see what's going on. So I journal. Uh, therapists want us to journal, um, but we're all afraid with that whole writing stuff down because it'll be used to judge us. And that's why in my grief journey so far, I haven't talked a lot. I started to open up a little bit, get, was getting ready to open up in February, and then the incident on Facebook on my other profile blew up in my face. Um, one thing got linked to another, and... Um, I did lose people, but what hurt the most was the person I thought I could trust and the words that she said. Um, although not as rude and as noxious as what was going on in that post, um, but was still, as someone I felt close to, it was very, very rude. I thought, I thought they knew me better. but. So anyways, um, this next bit I am writing from third person because I needed to write. This today is hard. And the, another message I got on Messenger. Um, there are days I really just don't want to look at my phone. Um, but I need to keep in touch with people. Um, just moved me into this place today this day of all days where 
really I don't need to be asked how I'm doing and I just I need to be asked what are your plans for the week type thing because how I'm feeling is like garbage so once upon a time there was a little girl who tasted love was touched by someone she could feel had it for her that person died when the little girl was too young to understand the power of it she known cruelty and kindness before this and it marked her like a scar covering an open wound. All around her, there were people who could have genuinely loved her, but didn't. Life is harsh like that. Growing up, all the gr little girl wanted was the fairy tale she knew she deserved, that she always knew was there. It seemed she would never find it. I need that. I need this always just beyond her reach it took most of her life to finally find to finally find him it was then she found herself in a nightmare the fairy tale would have to wait she waited she prayed for salvation sometimes it felt so good to run away okay monkey ow down go play with toys go play with toys <laughs> <laughs> she waited. She prayed for salvation. Sometimes it felt so good to run away, but something always told her not to. The woman fought that too. It was too painful some days. Destiny. Follow your purpose. Over and over it kept her near him. So she stayed. End game. It was all about the end game. As she stayed, she felt it. A truth it took time for him to admit, but she could feel it from the beginning. He truly loved her, the something that she had spent her life looking for, the hope that breathed strength. He loved her and she could feel it. Even from behind the walls he'd put up, she could feel it. It was the best relation and relationship and loneliness lived there. That often drove them apart. It was the truth of their love that always brought them back together. She was learning not to run away emotionally. She was learning to appreciate his love and build healthy boundaries. He truly loved her, and that was <laughs> all that mattered. But life is cruel and doesn't care. Despite the moments that showed her that her staying was worth it, time slipped away from them. Illness shattered whatever ideas of happiness the two dreamed of. A slippery slope left them unable to hold onto each other strong enough to not be parted. He left her in the cruelest of ways. He was there and then he was gone. He would never come back to her in the way she truly needed. Their physical bond broken, she fell. He died and she died. No melodrama. Her life as it was just ceased to exist. There would never be any hope of reconciling like the one there would never be any hope of the reconciliation like the one they were headed for. That would have to wait. And yes, that is how I've been feeling. That is why everything feels so surreal. What are you doing, Mr. Mikey? No, in my book. My book. My book. My book. Yeah. Life with cats. Grief and life with cats. Uh, Mr. Monkey. Ow, no claws. <laughs> um, and it's at, at this point, okay, you go over there. <laughs> Bye. Um, I started writing from the first, pers first person. I switched from third person to first person. Um... His death threw me into a shock I could, I can't recover from. There is no surviving there. There is only waking up and redefining what life is to be for me. Some would say this is surviving. One chapter ending and another beginning. That's not true. I was writing a story with him. One of significant importance to us both. That book will be left unfinished now. Especially depending on which direction I choose to go. 
which path to take. The world is moving faster than I can handle. Even in this time of COVID, I feel dizzy from the speed of it. I haven't been able to breathe since Kirk passed away last summer, September 2020. Right now, all I feel I have of him is my pain. I won't apologize for not sharing it. Sure, there are things. I, I have his thing. There are lots of things. There are, there are, <laughs> there, there are magic cards still. There are swords. There's chainmail. There are some books. There's video games. I almost cried when I read this part last, last time. They, they are just things. They, for me, they didn't make... Kirk's things weren't what defined Kirk for me. I didn't be with him, marry him, for things. I stayed because I listened to my heart and for the love he had for me. It wasn't a fairy tale. It was destiny. Many years ago, I cried one night because words were whispered to me while moon gazing through my kitchen window. Um, it was happening as my first marriage was falling apart again. And so I was having a conversation with, with the moon and just generally with the universe. Words that said I was to love the next ones, no matter what, just love them. And my feelings didn't matter. Hang in there. That hurt. I cried. I, I've always known I was important to the world, to the universe, and for the universe to turn around and tell me that I didn't matter, that all these other guys mattered more than me, really hit me. I am the generation that grew up with Mary Tyler Moore and the Anjali commercials, <laughs> you know, we came the generation after the 60s where women could go and be, and even though a lot of women were already going and being and doing, they were making it possibly, possible. And I've watched feminism get absolutely twisted and become something So far from where it started, that everybody's confused now. However, I didn't know then that those cruel words were leading me to something greater. I realize now that it meant, like right now when I'm writing this, um, that it meant keep the faith. It meant I would eventually find a love worth sacrificing everything for. And I did sacrifice because Kirk was a certain type of person in himself that he thought himself to be, that in order to be with him, I had to change things about myself. And normally that's a bad thing that can be so, so bad. We watched that, to the toxic relationships where people change and we lose those people. And so I spent a lot of time questioning myself as to whether or not I was doing the right thing to make these changes. I opened wounds and I dealt with them, cleaned them out as best I could so I could be with him. To be what he needed. Because I knew what I found. <laughs> I did about everything I could to keep that love in my life. He knows a lot of things that I did. Some things I look back on and I would advise no one ever to do it. But it was right for this situation. And I weighed the pros and cons. And did it anyways. You know, 
but I was as honest as I could be and probably too honest with him in a lot of things. And I climbed that mountain. And so when it's hard, I, I, and I'm in the ifs, if onlys, and if I had done this, or if he'd listened, I try, I, I try to remember that, that I did stuff. I did do the work. Sometimes love just isn't enough and it has to go away. When he died, he took with him what I desperately needed to survive. I fell the hardest I have ever fallen. And like a mirror hitting the floor, I shattered. Too many pieces to pick up and fix. Even all the king's horses and men couldn't put Humpty back together again. And this kind of leads me to where I was feeling in the message. Because I don't think the person meant to be pushy today. I just was frustrated with the situation. And, you know, I appreciate all the help and the people who are there for me. But... There's a place I'm in that this has to be my pace. This has to absolutely be my pace. I don't want to be put back together again. I don't want to be strong and put forth a brave face. I want to hide, to take a break from the pain, but do it better than what I have been doing. I want to breathe again. There's something that happens when you lose somebody really close and I, it's happened to me twice, but really, really badly this time. I, The grief I have with my mother's passing, oh my God, it's pale compared to how deep the emotions run with Kirk's passing. You know? I want to breathe again. I do. I just want to breathe. I have stopped breathing. I've actually caught myself not breathing since he passed away. I want the confusion to end. I saw something for my future that is coming, but I don't feel I'll ever be ready for it because I have to trust. Now, there are people who do not believe me, and this is where the hurt came from the comment on the ill-fated post last February, is that person had seen my gifts in action and then turned around and mocked, basically mocked me and made it like, it ne like I was lying. I resent that to the point of, if I'm going to be honest, I hate that person for it. I don't throw out my empathy, my, my highly sensitive person and my psychic gifts for the world to see because it's a joke, because I'm looking for attention. They are what they are, and the one thing I do is death. And the one thing I saw from the beginning of our relationship was he was going to die. But I was also told that, if, that I wasn't supposed to let him die. Okay? So when I see something, what I saw set me on edge and I saw it coming about two months before he died. So not appreciated when people try to call me on it. Who well on one hand I had someone who was a friend tell me that it was scary how I just knew that I always knew and that it, it scared him. But then mock me because I live in this other world that doesn't seem normal. And yet millions of people live in this place. 
and we're not all frauds and charlatans. We're just good people. So yes, I want to breathe again. I want my confusion to end. A lot of days I don't want to see anything else. And I don't feel ready for a whole lot of things because I have to trust. The little girl inside no longer wants to, and I don't blame her. She needs to heal her broken heart. How does one mend a broken heart? With love. I will be okay. I just don't want to be right now. I deserve that. Love will mend my broken heart. I just don't feel safe putting on Facebook even half of what I would normally have done because of what happened in February. I didn't deserve that. They deserved what they got because in some respects my husband died. I don't care if it was five months earlier. Smell the coffee. There's People need to have smell the coffee moments and wake up because grief can become an entity onto itself. There's a timeline, there's a statistical timeline that I found somewhere, I don't even remember where I found it, that you gotta pay attention to your people for about three months when they lose somebody close. You know, think in terms of the little old man who lost his wife. He spent his entire life relying on her and almost always you will see that within about three months they're gone because he relied on her so much he couldn't live without her so he died it's very melodramatic and i i don't live by the rule of thumb of dying because of a broken heart it's just too melodramatic for me it is not who i am but i became like that little old man so i have been struggling now, the problem with that three-month timeline is they do it from the when the person dies. But what happens when somebody receive, goes through a trauma, that three-month actually doesn't start until they come out of shock. I've now done that twice. Because both my major deaths were traumatic. And so much so that they have now sat on other things that I have not been able to process because I'm stuck in that. And I would say that in the case of Kirk's, it's very hard for me to say this word, but Kirk dying. <laughs> And this video is going to be however long this video is going to be, because this is for me. Uh, when I rewatch videos, I can't really look at pictures of him right now. I haven't been for a month and try to watch stuff of him. I can't do that. I went with that. I went through that with when my mom passed. It, it just hurts too bloody much. But I am. We'll be shortly looking at PTSD stuff because everything that happened with Kirk's death on top of all the other, I know, legitimately traumatic stuff that happened in my life. Um, that I have it. It's not good to self-diagnose. That's what people get paid for because often we are wrong when we self-diagnose. But often there are people who can do it because they know themselves well enough to know to go look in certain directions. And so I would count Kirk 
having a heart attack. That that's who turns out it was. On my kitchen floor, he dropped. On the kitchen floor. And they did come and they revived him. He was not conscious, but they revived him. And then he went to the hospital. We had another heart attack. And they revived him, but he wasn't conscious. And he went to Edmonton. And then I went the next day because the doctor said I should come. I didn't want to come. I made myself go. I pushed myself to go. When I knew that I didn't want to go, didn't want to face what I was going to face, I knew what I, I had a feeling I knew what I was going to face. Morgana never lays on me unless, like she had never laid on me before and she was on me for like half an hour. And then I got there and he just wasn't there. He still wasn't conscious and he just wasn't there. It did make it easier to do make the decision I had to make. And I did have some support, which I appreciate immensely. But it didn't make my life easier. I think sometimes people misread my behavior because they don't take the time to really get to know me. Um, they don't listen to what I say and they brush it off as I'm just talking. I am very verbose, but I don't just talk. Sometimes I am very much the voice of the turtle is heard in the land. So, I just don't want to be all right. I don't want to be okay right now. I deserve that. It is already showing up that love will mend my broken heart. Over the last several months, there's been little things, and I have marked it down as to what those things are. Because the universe, or God, if you will, Allah, have been showing me little signs. Mostly through music, but it has been. It has already begun. I said once to never doubt maternal instinct. There's a powerful love. They're stronger than any romantic true love story. I am hating the world so much right now as I write this. All I want to do is scream. Oh, how wonderful to blow up every to blow everything up and just walk away. How easy that would be. And depending on my mood, it's everything. Just walk out the door. But then there's maternal instinct. My life story ended with him, but a new book started on the night of June twelfth. 2021. Love found me in the most unlikely way. I was slipping again. Probably had already slipped. I can see that now. I'd already slipped. June 12th was when Monkey showed up at my door. Sometimes love comes in the tiniest of paws. On the tiniest of paws. I'm smart enough to know the signs and what they mean. Sometimes true love is the most toxic thing a person can experience and it destroys everything and kills. Sometimes true love is the most amazing thing in the universe and is so beautiful that it's blinding. Sometimes true love lands somewhere in the middle. That's how it was with Kirk and I. A seesaw roller coaster, but definitely one worth riding, and sometimes true love is as soft as kittens fur. It took almost two hours to bring that kitten into the house where it is safe, and now he's disappeared. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> 
Yeah, so two hours to get him in the house where it's safe. I don't know his history. He doesn't know mine. I just know right now we need each other. I think he's about a month and a half now. I think his eyes haven't fully darkened up yellow. They still have this shade, so I'm wondering if they're going to be green. Um, Monkey reminds me to laugh and smile. He's proof that, although life is hard right now, there's always hope. That's a good reminder for me because I actually lost that, and no matter how much work I was doing, I couldn't find it. No words of encouragement were helping. Um, even, like, I was following, I've got friends on Facebook who post positive memes, and they're great, and it's everything I believed in before he died. I had a similar experience when Mom passed away, but it, yeah, very up and down since, with his passing, because I have a hard time saying the other word. Uh. Oh, oh, so as Monkey sleeps while I write this, I have been asking myself, what is the price of true love? For me, the answer is whatever I'm willing to sacrifice for it. I have the ability to see the truth in the bigger picture and make my decisions based on that. Not everyone is so lucky. It is good to stop and see things from other people's perspective, just as long as the world we see is the right one. That that world is the one that resonates with our spirit. It's why I stayed with Kirk when a lot of people ran before I even came into the picture. I saw, and this is the part that may be unsettling for some people and get me in trouble. Um, was the fact that I said it's why I stayed with Kirk when a lot of people ran before I even came into the picture. I saw someone worth loving for love's sake and nothing more. I stayed not for what he could give me, but for what I could give him. In this I got something better than I could ever e expect. A home. I might not be able to fix the what was me. But with patience, hope, and love, a home can be mended better and stronger than before. So as I come to the close of this ramble, I am reminded again that love doesn't die. I've been sitting here for months, well, for years, because he, I think it was because he couldn't see it, that in his own brief story, He'd lost the most important person he loved. That he, he couldn't see that other people loved him or couldn't see it in a way they loved him and that people cared. A lot of my time with Kirk was spent reassuring him that he was loved and cared for. And that's why I said it in the poem, which truth? Which truth do I talk about? Because there's a truth that I sit with every day that several people will sit and deny ever existed. That I'm lying and that I'm just trying to get attention. But if you've been following me on this channel, you will see I don't do that. I don't do stuff to get attention. God, there is no way to do that. It's, it's hard to do with an empath. You know, you might be looking for answers, and it may look like you're looking for attention, but you're looking for answers, not attention. And that's difference. There's a big difference there. But yes, no, they will say they were important, and in their eyes they were important. But not in the way that he needed. They had importance in his life, but they weren't important in the way that he needed. I dealt with a lot of the dark side of Kirk. 
and that is part of my grief journey. And I just, how do I talk about that? How do you say what you need to say without speaking ill of the dead? How do you say your truth and have people attack you? Because that's not the Kirk they knew. I think that there's room for both. And I do feel sad that in a lot of ways, I am the only one who actually knew him. There were people who knew him better than other people, but my gifts allowed me to see so deep inside. There was a wall that he put up when he was five years old. A very strong brick wall. He hid things behind there. It cracked for me without even trying. I wasn't trying at all to open him up. I mentioned it to him because when that happens, it's meant to be, whatever's behind that wall is meant to be seen. I told him about it because I was concerned. And he told me not, not to press any further and not to go any deeper and to leave it alone. So I did. That doesn't mean that it went away, that he built the wall back up. It actually crumbled more and I sort of saw some more stuff. So that sits with me. But he never shared that. There's stuff he just never shared with anyone else for fear of being ridiculed, potentially persecuted, hated. That's part of my grief journey. Part of my grief journey is the day he sat in the truck and said, and was had completely fallen apart and was crying because he didn't want anyone to need him anymore. And so I shut down and backed off. But my needs aside, that's part of my grief journey. There is a ton of that. Well, a ton is being melodramatic. There is a bunch of stuff like that in the relationship I had with Kirk. Hello, monkey. That is part of my grief journey. And But to tell the truth causes more problems. So what is the truth? What is reality? And so, yes, I have been, in some ways, suffering because I wanted to say stuff, but the last time I said stuff, I hinted at stuff. I got told to quit attacking that person and that I was an evil, awful person, and I wasn't compassionate, and I wasn't caring, and how dare I, and basically I was lying Those that truly know me, I know I don't lie very well. That it causes me pain to lie. It serves no purpose to lie. I'm one of those people. Things have to be purposeful in order for me to be in support of it. So lying doesn't serve a purpose. Even the lies by omission where I skirt the truth on things bothered me. Should I have said that? And that's what's gone on in my grief journey is this lie by omission because I don't feel safe enough to talk about it because it hurts so bad that I'd rather die then deal with it. But thank heavens for maternal instinct and little fuzzy things that show up right before my birthday, before my 50th birthday, to shake me out of my head and get me going in a better direction. So as I close, 
as I come to the close of this ramble, I am reminded again that love doesn't die. It doesn't fade or cease to exist. His love for me will always surround me to give me the hope and strength I need. For he gave me a home that with enough time that little girl would have found the love she was looking for. My childhood trauma was one that was I had knowledge of a little bit, but was the scar with the open wound. Uh, was coming to a forefront when I met Kirk. He gave me a safe place to open up, to be open about it. And I unfortunately have not, was not given the time of what good love and comfort can do for that kind of broken heart. And so, I'll reread this. For he gave me a home that with enough time that little girl would have found the love she was looking for. And that's the best true love story anyone could ever hope for. As for Monkey, who knows how long we will be together. I just know I'm going to treasure whatever time we do have. I have broken out in hives. I have never broken out in hives over cats. Usually it's a facial thing. So our true love story may be short. I may be right about having to give him away. Um, he may be a right now uh, familiar and support animal. Um, it might just be the to get me out of the sad place so I have hope so I can look out and see the sunshine as something more than trying to bake me and set off my arthritis. Um, that is why I got my shot for COVID. Um, second one comes in July, um, within a week or two, because I need to not be alone anymore. I need more than the two people who are helping me. And that they can give me. I need to go home. I need to see mountains. I need to see lakes, water. I don't drive. I'm completely reliant on other people for that. So I spend a lot of time at home. That's part of my grief. So living in the spiritual end of things, that is my salvation. His love lives there. And with it, I can feel him in the house. He never left. He is still here. He is confused. He apologizes to me all the time. And I know there's lots of people who won't believe that. But that's my grief journey. I am grieving for two. Not everybody passes over softly and quietly and sits on a pink cloud. He was not a Christian. He didn't believe in that. Part of my grief story is the journey we were taking through the spiritual. Given some more time and opportunity, he would have been worshiping the Norse end of paganism. He was a pagan. So all of that is part of my truth, his truth, and my grief journey. So, um, none of us knows how long we are going to be here. We never know when what we have is just going to suddenly end and stop, and we are no longer who we are. And it could simply be menopause. It could be an accident where you lose a limb. It could be the loss of a job that was defining your life. It could be a child. It could be your pet child. It could be a, a traumatic event that happened to your town like a tornado, a fire, flooding, where just everything is gone. It's not the same. 
and I'm going to validate that that is a different grief journey and that it is okay to feel like that is gone. You died too. Because I didn't die with mom. There was a piece of me because of the trauma of it that disappeared. And I felt lost because I was now an orphan and pictures and everything were just gone when she passed. I would not want anyone to find out about their loved one that way, ever. It skewed me, it changed me, but it changed me. It didn't end me. I was headed for a suicide, unknowingly headed for suicide, until one night I got lucky, a song, of all things, um, saved me, woke me up. With Kirk, it's not the same. My life was so much his life that when he passed and took all of that was gone, I had nothing left. So that leads me to what I always do at the end of this is the positives. And I'm proud that I can live there regardless of anything and this will probably be like the only widow's journal ever to be posted on Facebook. Um, I kind of just want to do it all in one lump sum and then deal with the consequences. Not that I want to do that but just deal with the consequences and then move forward from there in this my new life um, that I'm sharing with the... I haven't had a crazy... well I won't say that because it's been like a year and a half since I had, not quite two years since I had crazy kittens like that. And Morgana and Bastion some days, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> you two are so big, but you're so, you're just so weirdly nutty, nerdy, you know, that's my normals. So anyways, I am grateful. That monkey showed up on my doorstep. His name is Nut Monkey because the crate I had it in had him in. He was it's a larger dog it's a medium dog size crate or something like that. And he's hanging and swinging and all that kind of so yay. Yay for monkey. Cause he does all these things that despite the hive make me laugh. And I think I've got uh, a bit of uh, a handle on that. God I hope so. We do, hey monkey. Um, I am still very grateful for the fact that the house is paid for because everything else, the house helps keep me grounded. It's not in the best of shape, but it's some place where I can hide from the rest of the world. I am grateful that I am figuring things out that I am able to see, I am grateful that I am able to see that life is really that horrible and miserable. And I can still find things that bring me hope. Um, that would be four. Uh, and I am grateful for my spirituality because it builds my face structure and in that gives me something to hold on to because you're so little there's hardly anything to hold on to yeah and you're still so tiny so skinny um, one day I will wake up in enough time to call the vet's office and get you a doctor's room I will do that mm-hmm then so yes, I am grateful and proud that I can be in touch with my inner strength. That no matter what, I am. I can find some way to get there. It may take two, three hours of listening to music on YouTube, 
but I will eventually get there. And although I have hated my mother for saying that she didn't worry about me like my brother and sister, because she always knew I would be okay. So she just didn't worry about me. And often worry is a sign of caring. I was just her one child that she didn't have to worry about. I hate that she told me that. Sometimes parents should keep shit to themselves. Um, um, but and here's the daughter thing. I hate that she was right. I really do. <laughs> um, but she was right in all in more ways than she knew and so wrong in other ways, but um, stories for other time. But I will be okay once I get done with not being okay. Because love comes on kitten feet. On kitten feet. And is soft. And warm. And purrs. And endless purrs. Yes. Purr, 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 purr. Mm. Yes. So. Peace, love, and happiness. And I hope that if you watch this video all the way through, you got some insight into me, into what's going on, into why I'm doing things. Not that I sub no, I'm not going to disqualify that. Screw that. That's my grief journey. It is all valid. Whether it's important to you or not, it is valid. And I do hope that, you know, if you are going through something, maybe I did help validate some feelings that you may have. Remember to seek help where you can find it, and sometimes that is mental health. Unfortunately, I'm unlucky right at the moment. Mental health is just so screwy here. It's not good here. Um, otherwise, I would already be there. So seek help. Um, and I will learn to love again. Thank you for watching.